Hi everyone, it's Joe Whedon from Joe Whedon Melbourne. How are you going? I'm about two minutes late, I'm sorry, but the whole internet thing and trying to set up lights and all the rest of it, and it's still looking really, really dark. So I might have to turn on the overhead light just a minute. Okay, that makes it a little bit better. Although someone can tell me if it's dark for you. The camera is looking really dark for me, so maybe that's just something I'm doing. It's really bizarre. Um, and it's telling me it's live, but I can't see anything. Okay, hi Donna, how are you going? Can you tell me, is all of the camera view, like the lower half of the camera, dark, please? Because I, just looking at it, it seems really dark to me, but I, I know that things are quite different when it actually goes live. A bit bizarre. Um, I really don't like doing this whole trying to fix it up while we're live thing, but yeah, you know, we'll see what we do. Um, well, it seems alright from what I can tell. Okay, what are people telling me? Hi, Alison. G'day, g'day. Ah, oh, thanks, Donna. Hi, Kayleen. G'day. So, because of this problem, <laughs> this time, I've not got what I wanted to show you out already. So let me grab a couple of things. Um, I thought I would show you in our annual catalogue that we have. And you'll be pleased to know I'm hoping to go to Apple tomorrow to have a look at my camera so that I can try and work out why everything is not flicked around the way it should be. Um, in the annual catalogue, there is an incredible amount of ideas right throughout the documentation ideas of how to make a particular card, ways of setting colours up together, all that sort of thing. So I thought that I would work on that. I've kind of beaten the birds from the the bird ballad suite a lot. So I have decided that I'm going to work on the Noble Peacock suite. And this one in particular, let me just move it without the glare. I really like this display here, this box that they've used with the peacock feathers and everything. But I'm going to turn it into a card. So essentially it'll be the same sort of thing, but in a card format. So let me move this out of the way so there's no more glare for you. Roll my sleeves up and you can see my cat's been scratching me this morning. Decided he didn't want me laying in his bed. He wanted to be alone. So what I have got is our Royal Peacock stamp set and blue bushel cardstock scored in half. Now here in Australia obviously we work with um, the metric system so this is 21 centimeters by uh, 14 and a half which is essentially half a piece of cardstock um, and then I've got the Noble Peacock uh, specialty designer paper which has this really gorgeous sheen to it. I might actually get you the other colours as well. I'll show you. Just really beautiful. So here's the blue one. Turn that down. So the phone's not, so the computer's not beeping. There's the blue bushel one. And I've turned the radio off as well. I was told that that was a bit distracting last week. So I appreciate being told that so that I can, um, it allows more people to watch without being distracted, of course. And here we go, the pretty peacock sheet as well. So they're all just stunning. I think they're just really beautiful. And there's not a lot you need to do on these cards, of course, because the designer paper works for you. So that makes it makes it really easy. One of the advantages again of Stampin' Up! products is that they all match. So I've placed the designer paper on top and you'll see I've got a bit of a space around each side. I have I dropped my sizing by half a centimetre and so then that means uh, that we can have an even frame all around. Hi Rails, g'day Alison. Donna's got her cat Theo on her lap. Yeah, well, Tiger would normally be wandering around, but I think he's disappeared finally for the moment. Um, so, 
Just let me grab some white paper. I'll move this out of the way so I certainly don't get some stamp ink on it. Because as you may already see, I've, my blueberry bushel is a bit juicy. And we're going to stamp up our peacock. Oh, I'm just trying to do everything all in sight, sorry. Line this up. I'm going to stand up because I like to stand up while I'm stamping. Turn that over. And the advantages with the poly stamps, of course, is that you can see through. So you can see where you're placing your where you're placing your image. Give it a bit of CPR, but no rock and roll because you don't want any of this marking to go on your cardstock. And then pull it up. Oh, look, I've missed that. Do you know why I've done that? Because. I forgot to grab this. So let me stamp the image again and I'll show you. It'll be on the back, but that will be a bit of a trade secret. No one needs to know, right? So here we go. Bit of CPR. <coughs> hey Jackie, how are you going? Is it cold down there? There you go, that's a better image. So giving this using this pad actually helps to get a more um, even image and then one two three presto I've cut this out already <laughs> here and I won't pull the image out again because I don't want I don't like the glare of the page against the camera for you but I've used a sponge just a sponge on the green on the old olive ink and I've just put that onto the ink pad and and just rubbed it really gently, just to pick up these the detail of the peacock. I think they're called eyes, aren't they? The eyes of his of their feathers, I believe. Um, and just to to lift it a little bit, and that's in old olive, so it's not with the pretty peacock ink. I've used old olive to do that. So that's one part. Then using this ribbon and I'm trying to see if you can actually see there's a bit of a gleam on it and the advantage with this is it's double sided so you can choose which colour you would like to use against your designer paper you could use the pretty peacock side or the blue bushel and either would work really because you're, you're doing blue and green even though mum would always say blue and green to no is it blue and green with nothing in between or something like that and then on a piece of white scraps with the blue bushel again we use the wording and on the card let me get it out here on here congratulations on such an amazing accomplishment which is what I'm going to stamp I'm going to keep it pretty much close to what this is you see that? Yep. That's what I'm going to do. So I thought while I'm stamping, I'll just tell you how much fun I had reading everyone's comments last week in relation to the post that I put up for Adult Learners Week. I had a lot of feedback in relation to teaching um, 35 non-English speaking adults at my workplace. Um, and wearing a different hat because normally I'm childcare coordinator but being there to teach them how to make a card to give to somebody they care about was such a beautiful experience. Men and women of all ages, I think there was something like 17 different cultures in the room, everybody helping everybody. It was just truly wonderful. It's such a good way to share the love of making something and also um, using the products that just work so well together. So it was really lovely. It worked both ways. I had a great time and I enjoyed myself as well. So here you go. I've stamped the words and abracadabra. <laughs> I have this ready to go also. Only because, you know, you guys don't need to see me using a big shot all the time. Um, now I don't have the Noble Peacock foil sheets that they show in the example. So I have used 
the silver foil here and I've colored it using our blenders using the dark Bermuda Bay blender so when you put it all down together which I will shortly it all kind of works in with the um, with the color palette so let me just show you how easy this is I'm just going to do it on this so I don't mark let me just see am I in shot yes I am great Hey Wendy, g'day. Hi Karen. My goodness, lots of friends are here. Thank you. So this is as easy as it is. Um, I actually tried this with sponging the Bermuda Bay or the, the Blue Bushel earlier, but it didn't work because they're water-based inks, whereas the markers here are alcohol-based. And so that means once this dries, it can be... It can be used. So I'm just going to snip off the very end bit because we don't need that. And then I've also cut, which is actually difficult to see in the photo, but I've also cut some more of the um, fauna using the dies in the Pretty Peacock set as well. Which I didn't mention earlier with cutting out the the peacock. I've used the dye there for the bird and then the various faunas for the oops, for the tree bits as well. Okay, so let's just remove all this because the ribbon needs to go down first, which I have here. I've already got it ready to go. Let's use the grid paper to make sure that we get that nice and reasonably straight. Just so that it sits properly. Let's pull in these. And put a couple of those down. I didn't prepare this bit very well, did I? Juggle, juggle. Actually, using the dimensions made me remember. Do you know, in the... Uh, holiday catalogue there are black dimensionals and so this means that when you do a creation where clearly you don't want to see any of the scaffolding under your work you can use the black dimensionals I should have those next week so it'll be great to be able to use them and they'll be hidden so it'll be fantastic uh, and also you get the two various sizes within one packet also. So just checking the image. So this one goes down on here. And then I'm going to pull in my friend Groot, <laughs> who seems to make an appearance quite often. Ooh, might be getting a bit low here on the glue. But Groot has come through and it's <laughs> the glue is ready. So I'm just going to peek that in behind there. I think I'll place this one a little bit higher perhaps. Actually if I was better prepared I should have put it on dimensionals just to give these a little bit of height but that's okay. These will work. We'll see you soon Michelle, no problem. Thank you. Oh! <laughs> Whoops! See what happens when you're watching watching other people comment on your page. Okay. Let's just calm down, Joe, and put this in here. I'd say there's obviously a dimensional right there. Ah, oh, there we go. So it just adds a little bit of detail, just with the the image going across the green already. Now, the only thing I haven't done, as I said before, which I do like to do, is I haven't run the tape on the back. But that's all right. I have you all colonized, so, you know. <laughs> you can just sit and watch. It's okay. There we go. So I'm so pleased to see that spring is in the air. That there's 
blossoms on the trees and the birds singing and we're getting a bit of a tease with some nice sunshine. It's good. It'll make for a, a nice start to park run in the very least on a Saturday morning when I'm really cold. Here we go. Now if I fold that with, burnish it with the bone folder. There we go. So you can see all the detail. The peacock, congratulations. Um, and the only other thing I haven't got, let me just find, oh, here they are. Are the noble peacock, sorry about the glare again. The noble peacock rhinestones. Let me take them out just to be able to show you. Oh. Here we go. So some really gorgeous colours. Whoops, the green one's gone wandering. Let me put that on there. Some really gorgeous colours to match the suite. And like I said before, there's such a great um, selection of colours that work so well together. It, that takes all the thought process out of it. Um, so it's fantastic. So I'm going to use maybe the medium. I'm not sure if I want to put them, I might not put them on the peacock eyes. I might put them around instead. Thanks Donna. I appreciate your smile. Yeah, the blue one over there. Oh, do I want the blue one? Yeah. Why not? But I won't put it on the leaves. And and isn't there a rule you do odd numbers? Is that right? Someone in floristry once told me. You do odd numbers of things rather than the right amount, like equal amounts. Which is odd given that I like to buy two cans of tomato paste or, you know, whatever. So this whole artwork thing goes against my, my poor choice. But that's okay. And I'll put that there. There you go. The casing the catalogue for ideas is a fantastic idea. Susan actually told me how to do that today, or not told me how, but reminded me that I could do that when I was thinking about what to chat about. Um, it's such a great resource, the annual uh, catalogue and the holiday catalogue, both of them. Uh, and you can step it up or you can change it according to your stamp sets. You can use a uh, sketch of a card that you really like, but you've only got particular stamp set. Um, and it makes for getting your mojo back and getting some interest happening again. So thanks for liking my video and for watching. I'd love you to share it with friends, chat about what you like, what you prefer to see, all that sort of thing. Let me know and we'll see you next week. Thanks for your time. Bye.